Hi there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another game review. And today, very excited to check it out Festival of a Thousand Cats from Tasty Minstrel Games. This is for three or four players. Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review, and today I'm very excited to check out Festival of a Thousand Cats from Tasty Minstrel Games. This is for three or four players, take about 20 to 40 minutes to play, and it's for ages 14 plus. And in Festival of a Thousand Cats, there's the festival, there's a thousand cats, and this is a trick-taking game in which you are trying to collect fish and get yourself some oh-so-delicious milk, because cats love milk. But the catch is you don't want to get too much milk in front of you. If you get three milk in front of you, or more milk potentially, you're going to throw up half your fish and you're going to score or less points. It's a really simple trick-taking game in which you're racing to 20 points. But it's got an interesting theme, it's got some interesting mechanisms. Does that make it a good game though? Let's open it up and I'll tell you what I think. Alrighty then, take a look at what you're going to get inside a festival of a thousand cats. So first and foremost, we got our handy dandy rule sheet. It is just one large page, double-sided, full color, full of pictures, illustrations, examples, and it's very well done. Should have you up and running in no time at all. Big thumbs up in the rule booklet. Also, I can give you a good feel for how the game plays because it is a relatively simple game. So in Festival of a Thousand Cats, you're going to take your little fish score markers here and you're going to be trying to be the first person to get to 20 points on the score track. You are going to get points in this game by collecting milk, which will be worth two points most of the time, and fish on cards in your score pile, which will be worth one point most of the time. Now, if you're playing the advanced version of the game, uh, that's going to introduce these cards right here and also these tokens over here, which will modify the scoring a little bit. But I'll talk more about that a little bit later. Let's just talk about the base game for right now. Uh, so let's go for the components. Let's get into the gameplay. So component-wise, everybody's going to start with this big, chunky, large player aid card, which is really useful. It's going to tell you all the different cards in the game, what's on those cards, and also the flow of a turn and the scoring even at the end of a round. So very incredible incredibly useful player aid card. Love this thing. Huge thumbs up on this. Uh, let's take a look at some of the cards, and the cards are going to look like this. It's going to have a number between 0 and 13 up here. It's going to have a symbol most of the time that will either be a milk bottle, a water, or the dreaded crow. The crow symbol looks like that. The crow is going to be negative points. That's the only symbol you want to stay away from. Uh, also, on the bottom of the card is going to be a number of cats in the bottom left-hand corner. That's going to represent ties and show you who's higher or who's lower, and I'll explain that a little bit later. Uh, the next thing that you are going to do is when you first start the game, you are going to get all of the bottles out that have one of the four colors, green, blue, orange, and uh, gray, I guess it would be. The black ones, you're actually just gonna randomly shuffle in, but you're gonna make sure that everybody has two of these bottles right here, and then you're going to shuffle up all the cards and deal out until everyone has nine. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna put two cards in the middle of the table, like so. So we have ourselves a blue two and a green nine. What does this mean? This means that if you're going to play down a card, you have to follow suit because this is at its core a trick-taking game. You're going to have to play either a card that is not blue or that is not green. Now how this is going to work is, let's just go ahead and randomly throw out some cards and let's see what happens. This one, yeah, that's an orange. Uh, that is a blue, which will not work. Blue, 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 gray, green. Here we go. There we go. So this would be a really wonky hand we had right now, but everyone's going to reveal at the same time. So we got ourselves an 8, a 4, a 7, and an 11, and some glare. So how this works is, the person that played the lowest card is going to win the lowest card, and they will actually exchange that out. So this would go right here, because it's a 4 and it's the lowest. This would go into this player's scoring pile, and it's going to get them 2 points. Good for them. Uh, the person that's highest is going to get the highest number. So the 11 would get this. But since the 11 person played something with a milk, they're actually going to take one of these milk dishes right here, one of these little tokens. Now, this is going to be worth two points for you at the end of the round. But the round will end when someone gets three of these or when you've played, uh, someone has played or once everyone's played all their cards. Now here's the catch. If you happen to get three of the milk tokens, that means your cat drank too much milk, he's gonna throw up and you're gonna score less points for all your fish. And you're not gonna score any points for the milk, which is really stinking bad. So he would get that, but then he did turn it into this card, which is gonna be worth two points, so that's not the end of the world here. The other two players in this case, or if you're playing a three player game, the other one person, uh, which actually still is gonna end up being two people because if you're playing a three player game, you're gonna have a dummy hand that just randomly puts out a card, are 
are going to keep their cards and put them in the scoring pile, which in this instance was really bad because obviously it's the crow, which is negative one point. So that would go into their scoring pile. And then you would rinse, wash, and repeat with the eight remaining cards in your hand. And that's really the entire game. So now the only catch is that you cannot play gray. Now there is one exception, one little thing that will break the rule, which are those black cards. And the black cards work a little bit interesting because if someone plays a black card and you play a crow at the same time, then you actually swap out cards with that person. Do I not have a crow? Are you kidding me? There's not a crow here? You get what I'm saying, though. If someone were to play a crow, before you do anything, you are going to swap those cards. And the black cards, there's only two, but they are going to have milk on them. And this is how you could potentially get too much milk and your cat could get sick. So let's just throw out another hand and let's see what happens. So we throw these three, these four out. We get ourselves a 1, 9, 10, and a 13. So the 13 goes first, and he automatically takes this. Whenever you play a card with a milk, unless, of course, a crow swaps it, you're going to take that. But since he's got the highest number, he's going to get the 11 right there. Now, he doesn't get this milk. That's important to note that just because you win a card with milk on it does not mean you gain milk. So this card really doesn't do much of anything. Uh, then let's see who's got the lowest number. It would definitely be the 1. So he would get the 4 down here. And he would get that into his scoring pile, which gets him two points, which is good for him. And then the other two people would get to keep theirs, which they'd be happy about because they're scoring points. Rinse, wash, repeat, do it over and over again. A round will end until when everyone has played all their cards or when someone has played three milks, in which point you will get to the scoring. If you have zero, one, or two of the milks, the milks are going to be worth one point, and the fish are going to be worth, uh, excuse me, the milk are going to be worth two points, and the fish is going to be worth one point, a pop, on the cards that you score. Also, any crows are always worth negative one. If you have three or more milk tokens, uh, you're going to get zero points for your milk tokens, and you're only going to score one point per every two fish you have, which obviously stinks, but you threw up half your fish, which is a bummer. You're going to move yourself up on the score track, and then you're going to deal out the cards, and you're going to rinse, wash, and repeat, and really, that is the core of the game. Now, let's talk about the advanced mode. Uh, the first one has... Uh, the tokens, which I'm not the biggest fan of, so I'm going to talk more about the one that I do like, which are these cards right here. I think it's a little bit more simple and streamlined. And essentially, at the beginning of the round, you're going to get three of these cards. You're going to you're gonna look at them with your nine-card hand, and you're going to decide which one of the cards you would like. And they all look very similar, but the difference is, for every green fish you have, you're actually going to lose one point, and every orange fish you have, you're going to gain two points, and then one and one. Uh, I really do think it adds a little bit of variability, and it's a nice uh, difference as well. But I do think some people are going to like the tokens, but I think they add a little extra layer of complexity that I'm not the biggest fan of in the game, but I'll talk more about that in the pros and cons. Anywho, uh, you're going to go until uh, round ends in which someone has at least 20 points, whoever has the most points, over 20, will be the winner of Festival of a Thousand Cats. And that, in a nutshell, is how the game is played. Alrighty then, Festival of a Thousand Cats from Tasty Mitchell Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go for the pros, let's go for the cons. First, on the con side, game's not going to be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. Three to four players, uh, very restricted player count. Also, this is a pretty straightforward trick-taking game, which if you're not the market for a trick-taking game or a pretty straightforward game, this one's probably not going to be for you. Once you know what you're doing, you're going to probably gonna be able to pump this game out in about 20 minutes each and every time because it is very straightforward. You're just going to separate out the milk, deal them out, then deal out seven more cards, and then play cards until the round ends. Uh, so if you're looking for more meat on the bones, this one's not going to be for you. Continuing on with the con side, really kind of an odd con, is that I liked this game better the first time I played it, which was actually played incorrectly. So the first time I played this, I was taught incorrectly, and the, the way we played it was that when you collected a card that had a milk bottle, either by winning it yourself or by winning it from the middle, that's when you gained the milk. And I actually really like playing that game that way. Since then, I've played the game three times the correct way, which is that when you play out the milk card, that's when you collect the milk. But I actually like the other way better. I just thought it made the stakes a little bit higher, I think, because with uh, the correct way to play the game, and I guess this is a con that I'd have at the game, is that you know that if you just unfortunately happen to get four milks in your hand, well, you're probably going to be the one that throws up. Now, you can get lucky, and maybe somebody else will play crows, and they'll take it from you, but for the most part, you pretty much know you're kind of going to be hosed, unless you get lucky. And, and that uh, that is one of the cons that I have with the game. Any other cons I have with the game? 
Not really. I mean, it's a very light, straightforward, trick-taking game. And if you know all that going into the game uh, and you're still interested, I definitely can recommend Festival of a Thousand Cats. And I do think it is a fun game. Everybody I've played it with has enjoyed the game to various different extents. And there's a lot of different reasons why. First and foremost, easy to learn, easy to teach. Uh, it's, a, it's one of those games you can sit around, chit-chat, play in cards, because it is. There's not too much thinking. It's just, I'm trying to get the high card, I'm trying to get the low card, or I'm trying to be in the middle. Uh, so that is what it is. Also, last kind I have with it is at three players, it is going to have a dummy hand. And obviously, a dummy hand is a dummy. So you never quite know to what to expect with a dummy hand, which is why I like the game better at four players as opposed to three players. But I still like to at three players, continuing on with the pros. Uh, I, I like the fact that there's two different ways to do the advanced scoring. So you can do the base game or you can do either of the two advanced scoring ways. I personally like the card version better than the tile version, but I definitely do think that if you played this game quite frequently, I think you would like uh, the tile version with the tiles a little bit better. But that's a your mileage may vary kind of thing. I like the components. I like the artwork. The box size is nice. The rule booklet's very well done. The player aid card's freaking spectacular. And in the end, I can put it like this. Do you like player aid... Uh, not player aid cards. Do you like player aid cards? If you like player aid cards, this is the game for you. No. Uh, do you like trick-taking games? If you like trick-taking games and you routinely hit three or four players, I think this is a game that you will enjoy. If not, this is probably what I would say is definitely a try before you buy. For me personally, um, I'm going to go back into my classroom and I'm going to play it the house ruled way, the wrong way that I learned it the first time. And if it goes over well, this is a game that I'm going to keep. Uh, because it did go over well with my kids, but they still have other trick-taking games they like better than this game, playing it the correct way, I should say. Kind of an odd thing right there. But in the end, Festival of a Thousand Cats, if you like trick-taking games, definitely might want to check this one out. So there you go. If you enjoyed my review, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below. If you want to support the channel, click on the little Amazon Associates link down below. Uh, sends a couple pennies my way. It really does help support the channel. And in the comments below, let me know what would you do at a festival of a thousand cats. For me personally, I am, I would probably just freak out and just pet every single one of them. I'm a huge cat fan. Like, I have a dog. I have a giant St. Bernard, 140-pound massive dog. So you think I'm a dog guy. No, I'm a cat guy. Cat guy all the way. Look, look, you little kitty pet, the little tummies, get the head, and they, oh, they give you a little scratch, put you in their place. Yeah, whatever. I love kitties. But let me know in the comments below. What would you do at a festival of a thousand cats? I would probably, they'd just all be so fluffy I'd want to die. Also, I would probably bring my super awesome laser pointer and just have, like, Oh my gosh, how would that even work? Like that would start, a, like imagine if you had a thousand kitties following a laser pointer. Like you could take that through the mall and just have like giant stampedes of cats and like run over old people and children. That'd be spectacular. Wow, this went off the trails. Let me know in the comments below. What would you do at a festival of a thousand cats? And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube. <coughs>